So we finally arrived at the moment where we actually start working with MySQL. And by start working with, I mean we're just going to install it and make sure it's running correctly on our Cloud9 instance. But still, it's something. So before we dive into that, I just want to show you a post on the Cloud9 community. This is written by one of the employees at Cloud9, and he's explaining how to use MySQL inside of Cloud9, inside of a workspace. And basically what it talks about is that they've created at Cloud9 a really quick and easy way to get MySQL running in one of your workspaces. It's much, much easier than what you would need to do to install it on your own. They have a nice little shortcut. There are three commands that we'll talk about. They're the three that are here. Basically, start, stop, and CLI. But before we go any further, I just want to point out that these are not general MySQL commands that you can run on any machine anywhere. These are actually Cloud9 specific. So the upside of this is that they've made it really, really easy, like almost too easy to get going with MySQL. You just run these commands and you're there. It's kind of magical. The slight downside of that is that it, it doesn't work on every single machine and it, it is Cloud9 specific. So when you do install on a Mac or on a PC, you'll just have to relearn a new command to do basically the same thing. But for now, since we're in Cloud9, we get to appreciate how easy it is. So the first command is mysql-ctl space start. And you'll notice that the three commands we're gonna take a look at all start with this mysql-ctl. And I believe it stands for command line tool CTL. It's just the abbreviation that Cloud9 came up with. So this first one, if we look at their documentation, tells us it starts MySQL and it will create an empty database the first time you start it. So let's give it a shot. You might notice that I cleared out everything in this directory. I got rid of those two starter files. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I just wanted to get rid of clutter. So we're going to write mysql-ctl space start. You can see it's hard at work installing MySQL. It's starting up a server. It's doing a few other things. Don't need to worry too much about that. It tells us a root user is my account name. Our database name is C9. It created a database for us. Again, we'll dive more into this um, in the next section when we actually start talking about databases and how you create them and work with tables and write SQL. For now, all that we really care about is that something happened, which is good. So the next command is the same thing, mysql-ctl space, this time CLI. And that stands for command line interface. And what this will do is it will start up the MySQL interactive shell. And if you've worked with any uh, database before, usually there is an interactive shell that goes along with it. Or if you've worked with things like Ruby or Python or Node, there are usually terminal or command line based interactive environments. If this is all new to you, I think it's easiest to understand it uh, just by using it and taking a look at it. So now let's try this again. This time, mysql-ctl space cli, and we hit enter. So now we have a bunch of new text. Welcome to the MySQL monitor. Commands end with semicolon, and uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. Tells us our MySQL, MySQL connection, server version, copyright, gives us a little copyright notice here. Um, and now we're inside of what's known as the MySQL interactive shell or the monitor. So this is where we can go to actually type commands. So if you think back to the telephone book example, this is where we would go and say things like, find me all users in our database who have a first name that is three characters long, or find me all users in our database who are 18 years or older. So this is where we can go to type code to interact with and access a database, but it's also where we can go and type code that works more on like a meta level. You can think of it as doing things around permissions creating entirely new databases, uh, transferring data from one database to another. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things we do in this shell, and we'll be working with this quite a bit. So for now, we're not going to do that. We're going to wait until the next section. All that we're going to see right now is that you can quit this. There are quite a few ways of quitting the shell. We can use exit, 
notice a semicolon, quit, also notice a semicolon. We can use backslash Q. I always mix up forward and backslash, but this slash pointing down Q, or what I usually use, control C. So whatever works best for you, I think there are actually a couple more different ways of quitting, uh, depending on the platform you're using. But for me, I usually use control C. But just to illustrate that, I'll do two of them. So let's do quit, semicolon. We get a nice message, bye. Seems a little sad. We can restart the CLI by either retyping that whole thing or just hitting the up arrow. So I'm gonna do that now and hit enter. We get this exact same message. You'll see it every time. This time, I'm gonna use control C. You'll just have to trust me I did it. Actually, you won't because you can see it here. Control C. This time it says aborted. So there, it turns out there actually is a little bit of a difference. If you notice up here, it said bye. It kind of was expecting to quit because I used the quit command. And here I just ended the process, um, which is why it says aborted. So technically there's a difference, but I just used uh, control C because you don't have to really type anything. It's much easier. You don't have to hit the enter key. You don't need a semicolon. Um, really whatever you prefer. Some people like to be more explicit and use quit or exit. Okay. So the last command that we're going to take a look at is mysql dash ctl space stop. And you're really, really rarely going to use this one, but what this one will do is stop the mysql process completely. So to understand what that means, it helps to understand what happened when we typed this first command here that started everything. So what that did is that it started up a new instance of MySQL. Then that's running constantly in the background at all times until we stop it. When we use this second command, MySQL CTL CLI, I know it's a lot of abbreviations here, but when we use that CLI command, it is connecting to the instance of MySQL that was started up from the first command. So just to reiterate, this CLI, when we do this and start it up, it is connecting to the MySQL connection that we started up earlier. So I'll exit. And if we wanted to, we can stop that background process. We can stop MySQL from running completely. So we're not just stopping the CLI. This is already stopped here. But we can stop everything uh, related to MySQL using mysql-ctl stop. And it just tells us stopping MySQL database server, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so three commands. Realistically, the way that this will work is that we'll start it up and we're going to leave it running for basically the entire course. And we're gonna start and stop the CLI all the time. Pretty much every other video will be starting up the CLI, typing some code, quitting. Um, so you should get used to that, but you don't really need to worry about stopping it all that often. Okay, so next up, we just have a quick little exploratory activity where you'll be able to type some new commands into the CLI and see what happens.